Welcome back to part two of me reviewing the 2012 Formula One season. As we now come to the start of the European races. First starting off in Spain. And the first qualifying session of the European season would certainly provide some shocks. But not necessarily in Q1. With Bruno Senna the biggest name going out. Felipe Massa's struggles in qualifying continued, eliminated in 16th place. But the shocking elimination in Q2 would be the Red Bull of Mark Webber. Very surprising when you consider that this track was one of Mark's best, but he could only manage P11. One of the surprises in qualifying was how good Sauber was. With Kobayashi in 9th but Sergio Perez up in P5, Sauber were flying extremely high. Despite showing promising pace in practice, Lotus disappointed, ending up in 3rd and 4th. Home favourite though, Fernando Alonso would go on to please his home fans, qualifying in a very high 3rd place considering Ferrari's struggles so far. Progress was now starting to be made at Ferrari. And taking pole position would be the McLaren of Lewis Hamilton, but it was not going to last long, as on the way back to the pits he ran out of fuel and then McLaren could not deliver the one litre fuel sample that the FIA needed. And because of this, Lewis Hamilton was disqualified from qualifying, meaning that he had to start from the very, very back of the grid. Meaning that, very surprisingly, Pastor Maldonado was going to start on pole position. What a turn of events. Could Maldonado get Williams their first win in eight years? Well, after the start of the race, it did not look very likely as Fernando Alonso from P2 beat him down to Turn 1, but there was still a long way to go. For the Sauber of Sergio Perez, his race was destroyed immediately, after contact with the Lotus of Romain Grosjean. This would lead to Perez getting a puncture and going right down the field. But at least for Sauber, they still had a very competitive car left in the top 10 in Kamui Kobayashi. After starting at the back, Lewis Hamilton slowly made his way through the field, but after an entire afternoon of being stuck behind slower cars, eventually he finished down in P8. Then we had the only accident of the race at the first round of pit stops, between Michael Schumacher and Bruno Senna, with Schumacher piling into the back of Senna at Turn 1. This would lead to Michael getting a 5 place grid penalty for the next race in Monaco. Midway through the race though, Maldonado would take the lead, as he undercut the Ferrari of Fernando Alonso. Now all Maldonado had to do was stay there. After a slow start late on in the race, Sebastian Vettel was now charging through the field. All after a penalty for using DRS under the yellow flags. After Alonso lost the lead to Maldonado, he now had another thing to worry about. Holding on to second place from the Lotus of Kimi Raikkonen. Alonso would just about hold on. As Maldonado amazingly took his first win in F1 and Williams' first win since 2004. A truly special weekend for Williams, but it did end on quite a sour note, as the Williams pit set on fire after the race. Thankfully though, no one was seriously harmed. So it was Maldonado winning from Alonso second, Raikkonen third, Grosjean fourth and Kobayashi in P5. With Vettel sixth, Rosberg in P7, Hamilton P8, Button in P9 and Hülkenberg in 10th. For Felipe Massa, this was probably his worst weekend of 2012. Qualifying 16th and only finishing in 15th. Things had to improve if he was going to hold on to that Ferrari seat. Soon though, we arrived in the Principality of Monaco. And the action started right at the start of qualifying. With Sergio Perez ending up last. After hitting the wall in Q1 at the swimming pool. Jensen Button's poor form continued as he missed out on Q3. Button's title chances were clearly slipping away. Finally in Monaco though, Felipe Massa made it into Q3, qualifying in a very healthy P7. Lewis Hamilton had a lot of potential coming into this session, but did not deliver enough by qualifying in 4th. The story of qualifying though was Michael Schumacher, who despite his 5 place grid penalty put it on pole position, with a fantastic final lap in Q3. This was the last time we would see the greatness of Michael. And what would be his final season in F1, this was a perfect send-off. But again, because of his penalty, that meant that Mark Webber would be on pole. 
the second time that Marx started in Monaco from pole, and he maintained it at the start. But there were a couple accidents at Turn 1, first between Roman Grosjean and Michael Schumacher, with Grosjean cutting across the front of Michael and putting himself out of the race. This was Roman's third lap 1 accident of 2012, and the other accident involved Pastor Maldonado and Kamui Kobayashi, and it would cause both drivers to retire from the race. Things though for Lewis Hamilton were not going too well, as he was generally struggling for pace in the first stint, and would eventually get jumped by two cars. First Fernando Alonso and then Sebastian Vettel. Hamilton and McLaren's pace was just really poor, and it also was for Lotus and Kimi Raikkonen, as he would end the race being stuck behind the two Force Indias. Not good enough by Lotus. After his heroics on Saturday, Sunday was not good for Michael, as he was also struggling for pace and then he retired late on. Jensen Button's truly awful weekend would come to an embarrassing end, as he crashed out of the race trying to pass Heike Kovalainen, who was in a cage room that was way slower than the McLaren. But the race would end with Mark Webber just about holding on for a second Monaco victory. Webber won from Rosberg in second, Alonso in third, Vettel in fourth and Lewis Hamilton in P5. Then it was Massa P6, the rest of P7, Hulkenberg P8, Raikkonen in P9 and Bruno Senna in P10. As Button, Ricardo, Schumacher, Kobayashi, Grosjean and Maldonado would all retire. A lot of misery for those drivers. But in the driver's standings it would now be Fernando Alonso leading. With the world champion Sebastian Vettel in second, Mark Webber third and Lewis Hamilton in P4. Red Bull though and the constructors had a clear lead. With McLaren second and Ferrari and Lotus tied for third place. Now time though to head off to North America. But once we came to Canada there were questions raised over the Red Bull car. And how legal the car actually was. And it ended up with Red Bull having to remove some parts. But then it was time for qualifying. Where Pastor Maldonado went on to have another accident. This time out of the final chicane on his final qualifying run. As he was pushing way too hard. The biggest shock in Q2 though would be the elimination of Kimi Raikkonen. Struggling a lot in the Lotus. And it would go on to set him up for a mediocre race. Impressing in Q3 though would be Paul de Resta, Who very nicely finished in P8. And set himself up nicely for the Grand Prix. The championship leader Fernando Alonso they would have a good session. Finishing in a very competitive third. And was definitely a contender for victory. But on pole position would be Sebastian Vettel in the Red Bull. Despite removing parts, the Red Bull car was still very fast. But could they go on to win? After the start, it looked as though they might, as Vettel led from Lewis Hamilton in P2. Very aggressive early on was Felipe Massa, as he passed Nico Rosberg in the first couple laps. But then very quickly after that, he spun at Turn 1. This would cost him a good points finish. But there was good news for Lewis Hamilton after the first round of pit stops as he managed to undercut Sebastian Vettel and take the lead, but was only just leading from Fernando Alonso in second and Sebastian Vettel in third. The fight was still on, but Vettel's race did not go to plan, as Red Bull were trying to do a one-stop, but it did not work out. After lingering in the lower half of the points for the majority of the race, Michael Schumacher then had to retire, as his DRS flap was now stuck open. This race day would go down to be quite possibly one of Jensen Button's worst, with Jensen nowhere near the points. Like Sebastian Vettel, Fernando Alonso was also trying to do a one-stop, but his tyres were about to fall off the cliff, as Lewis Hamilton soon passed him for the lead of the race. Then Roman Grosjean passed him for second, and then Sergio Perez passed him for third. Alonso's tyres went way off the cliff, and because of that, Lewis Hamilton took his first win of 2012. That is now seven different winners in the first seven races. Hamilton would win from Grosjean second, Perez third, Vettel fourth and Fernando Alonso in P5. Then it's Rosberg P6, Weber P7, Raikkonen P8, Kobayashi P9 and Felipe Massa in 10th. And it was truly horrible for Jensen Button. His teammate won the race but Jensen could only manage P16. He was way off the pace, and it was now time for him to step up. After Canada though, we went back to Europe, 
More specifically, Valencia. And qualifying would definitely be interesting. First in Q1, Mark Webber was out after suffering a massive Kurz issue. And there were plenty more shocks in Q2. First off with Michael Schumacher going out and also the two Ferraris, including home favourite Fernando Alonso. Even he could not put that Ferrari in the top 10. In Valencia, Jensen Button would improve by qualifying P6, but there was still work to be done. Again in the country of Spain, Pastor Maldonado was flying high, as he would qualify in third, but for two races in a row, Sebastian Vettel would take pole, at a track that definitely suited Vettel. And at the start of the race, he led the pack away. But the race did not really get going until halfway through. After the safety car came up because of an accident involving Bruno Senna. This is where the race gets good. Fernando Alonso up until the safety car battled his way into the top 5. And on the restart he was P3. But at turn 1 brilliantly passed Roman Grosjean around the outside. That got him up to 2nd. But very quickly after that Sebastian Vettel retired from the lead. Promoting Fernando up to 1st. But this was a massive blow to Vettel and Red Bull. A big 25 points were now blown. Also losing out on a good finish was Roman Grosjean. After retiring with the same issue as Sebastian Vettel. An alternator issue. He was driving very well until then. Along with Mark Webber, Michael Schumacher was nicely coming through the field. And at the end he got himself up to P5. But he would soon become third. As when Lewis Hamilton and Pastor Maldonado were battling for third, Maldonado took Hamilton out of the race, with Maldonado destroying his own race result as well, promoting Schumacher to third and Mark Webber to P4. That would be Michael's first podium since his comeback, but Fernando Alonso from P11 would win his home race, and was now the first driver in 2012 to win two races. He would win from Raikkonen 2nd, Schumacher 3rd, Weber 4th and Hülkenberg in P5. Then it was Rosberg P6, De Resta P7, Button P8, Perez P9 and Bruno Senna in 10th. And for both Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton this turned out to be a bad race for both of their championships. Losing out on plenty of points. But in the driver's standings Fernando Alonso was now clearly leading. By 20 points to Mark Webber in 2nd with Lewis Hamilton 3rd and Sebastian Vettel in 4th. Red Bull though still led from McLaren in the constructors, with Lotus now 3rd and Ferrari now in 4th. Fernando Alonso was now at his brilliant best. Was there anyone going to stop him? Find out in part 3. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back on Saturday with another podcast episode. And don't forget to join our Discord server, there's a link below down in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video, and comment down below what did you think about those four races. Please comment down below what you think about those topics, and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.